Hi guys, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at tasks in AsyncIO. If you're interested in reading the text version of this tutorial then I recommend you check out my website TutorialEdge.net and I'll be leaving a link to this tutorial in the description below. So before we get started you should know that this tutorial was built on top of my previous tutorial which covered event loops in AsyncIO. And again, I'm going to be leaving a link to that tutorial in the description below. So let's dive in. So tasks within AsyncIO are responsible for the execution of coroutines within an event loop. These tasks can only be run in one event loop at one time. And in order to achieve parallel execution, you would have to run multiple event loops over multiple threads. In this section, we're going to look at some of the key functions that can be used in order to work with tasks within our AsyncIO based programs. So one of the key things to note about tasks in AsyncIO is that you don't create them directly. You instead use the ensure future function or the abstract event loop .create task method in order to create them. Let's take a quick look at how we can use a task generator function in order to generate five distinct tasks for our, our event loop to process. So we'll start off by importing AsyncIO. We'll then import the time module and we'll define our my task coroutine. And within this, we're going to sleep for one second just to simulate some sort of processing. And we're also going to print out processing task. Next, we're going to define our generator function. So def my task generator. And we're simply going to do a nice and easy for loop for i in range 5 async io dot ensure future and we're going to pass in my task finally we want to define our event loop so loop equals asyncio dot get event loop and we want to do loop dot run until complete my task generator print out that we completed all our tasks and then just close our loop. So let's try run this. So Python 3.6 test.py and you should see that once every second one of our tasks is finally processed and after all five of our tasks have been processed you'll see the print statement completed all tasks. So let's now take a look at how we can retrieve all of our tasks that are pending using the all tasks method. So to do this we're going to extend our my task generator function and do the following. So pending equals asyncio.task.alltasks. And then we're going to simply print out this set of pending tasks. When we try and run that, you should see the following. Python 3.6 test.py. And as you can see, the set of all our tasks is printed out. And then all of these tasks are then scheduled and executed by our event loop and you can see the outcome of these tasks in the console below. So now that we know how to both schedule and retrieve all of our pending tasks, let's now take a look at the cancel function. So in order to demonstrate the, the cancel function, I'm going to extend the my task coroutine. So for task in asyncio.task.alltasks, I want to cancel all the pending tasks. Task.cancel. And if we save that and run it, you should see that our original set of five tasks is printed out. It then executes the first part of our first task, and then it goes on to cancel the rest of our tasks that are currently pending. And as you can see, everything's worked. So now that we've seen how we can interact with individual tasks, let's now take a step back and look at how we can interact with them as a collective, so more than one task at once. So let's start off by tidying this up a bit. And I'm going to modify my my task coroutine to return the product of the number passed in times two. And we're going to add this number parameter here. Next thing we want to do is we want to remove this my task generator and instead replace it with a main coroutine, which will take in 
a number of coroutines or set of coroutines. So within this, we're going to want to do for futures and asyncio dot as completed, and we're going to pass in the coroutines that we're going to be passing into the function itself. And the next thing we want to do is print out the awaited result of said coroutine or said function future. Finally, down here, we want to define our set of coroutines or a list of coroutines. And these are going to be my task. And we're going to simply put in number one for i in range five. And just change this loop run until complete so that it takes in main and our coros or coroutines. Finally, we want to try and run this. We're going to call python 3.6 test.py. And you should see that after the total time it takes for our task to execute, all of our futures, all of the results of our futures print out in the console. So this tutorial represents just a small number of ways that you can interact with tasks within the asyncio framework. There are, of course, other ways that you can interact with these things. Um, if you are interested in learning more, then the best place to start is either the documentation or the text version of this tutorial, which I'll be constantly expanding and adding more examples to as time goes by. If you did find this tutorial useful, then please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more Python-based tutorials.